Anyone that's purchased crypto before has performed a very simple cryptocurrency trade, but that's barely scratching the surface of the market and the amount of options out there. In this guide, we'll talk about how to make your first crypto trade and touch on some of the more advanced aspects of the process. The first trade almost everyone makes is a fiat to crypto trade. Exchanges act as an on-ramp for users into the space. Depending on location and jurisdiction, exchanges sell cryptocurrency for a variety of fiat currencies. Make sure to do your research into the most reputable exchanges available in your area. Some things you should keep in mind are the exchange's reputation, their fee structures, and their security. Essentially, make sure that you're aware of any fees the exchange will take from your transactions and how they'll keep your funds secure. We highly recommend working with exchanges that offer two-factor authentication. Generally, you don't want your password being the only thing protecting you from losing funds. Note that exchanges in most jurisdictions are required to verify your identity and perform certain know your customer and anti-money laundering checks. So be aware that you may have to send the exchange proof that shows you are who you say you are. Once you're on the platform and they've accepted your funding, you can make your trade for whatever coins the exchange offers. Congratulations on your first trade. Behind the scenes, the exchange will have created a wallet for you where your funds are stored. It's now up to you whether you want to keep trusting the exchange with those funds or move them elsewhere. We won't go into depth on all the different types of wallets here because we already have an excellent guide for that. But what you should know right off the top is the difference between a hot wallet and cold storage. Once you know the difference, you can watch our wallet guide and decide where you want to keep your funds. A hot wallet is like the wallet you carry around with you day to day. It isn't particularly safe, but it's convenient and gives you easy access to your money. Cold storage is a lot more like a savings account. The money isn't on you at all times, so it's more secure but impractical to use day to day. An example of a hot wallet is your cryptocurrency exchange. It's a software wallet that's always online and requires password input to access. This makes it vulnerable to attack, but very easy to reach your funds. A cold storage wallet would look like a piece of hardware that's separate from your computer. It is always offline, except for when you plug it in to access it. This means that while it is offline, it is totally safe from attackers. Again, we go much deeper into different types of wallets in our other videos, but you should decide whether you'll be using your crypto frequently or locking it away. Then you can choose a hot wallet or cold storage solution that's appropriate for you. Whatever wallet that you choose will provide you with a public key and a private key. The public key is the address that you will always use to receive funds. When you withdraw from an exchange and they ask for an address, it's your public key that is required. You're free to share it and use it however you like. Your private key should never, under any circumstances, be shared. If your private key is leaked or discovered, then your funds can be stolen and used without your permission. You will lose your funds and you won't be able to get them back. So write it down, keep it somewhere safe and secure, and do not share it. Once you have your crypto stored in an appropriate place, you're set up to engage with crypto to crypto trades. These work very similarly as fiat to crypto trades, but you're working within blockchain ecosystems. This means that you would take whatever currency you purchase with your fiat, let's say Bitcoin, and trade it directly for another currency like Ether. There are many exchanges that offer these services. Many are centralized, but some are not. The same concepts as noted earlier are important here. Make sure you look into the exchange's history and security to ensure that you're comfortable with who you're dealing with. With these two types of trades and some practice in researching for reputable service providers, you're all set up to purchase and trade for any coin you like. In our next guide, we're going to dive more into technical details like how to read charts and what sorts of terms you should learn. See you then!